Hi and welcome to Taxation TV this week. It's Windows 8 because it just got out there and everybody needs to know about it and we want to share our news about it. People being stupid, kids being in jail, and everybody's throwing out some money. Hi and welcome to Taxation TV. My name is Rusty G. I'm Alan. And this week, we've got all sorts of things. Windows 8's out there. We mm -hmm. need to tell you about that. We've got some lots of crazy stuff. But first, uh, we want to give thanks again to GMX, Geek Media Expo. We had a great time in Cool Springs. Uh, it was a long 48 hours. It was. Those two days. It really, yeah, it really was. stretched out forever. But we got Veronica Belmont, and we want to give a big thanks out to her again for being kind enough to follow us to our hotel room and stay there <laughs> for 20 minutes or so. But anyway... This is episode number 55. We want to get back into the news. We want to get, keep you updated as to what's going on. Obviously, Windows 8 is out now. Uh, Would you say it's surfaced? And it, it has surfaced. That is correct. You've probably seen the commercials at least a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft is pushing this about as much as Samsung is pushing their commercials. So, I mean, it's pretty much the only two commercials I see now in between, yeah. you know, things going on. So... Uh, the Surface is out there. I actually, actually had a friend of mine call me today and say, should I get a Surface or should I get an iPad? And I said, to be honest with you, it depends on what you use and how you use it, you know, because an iPad doesn't come with a keyboard. Surface, if you purchase the right bundle, will come with a keyboard. But that's the thing, it's that bundle, but it's almost $100 for the keyboard. Yeah, but I mean, without that bundle, it's $130, so you're saving yourself 30 bucks. so, you know. Yeah, it's... Um... Windows 8 is out there for those of you that have the upgrade. You can get it for $39.99 direct download only from Microsoft. You can buy the disc. I think it's $69.99 for that point or something like that for paying for shipping and the actual boxing and you know all the other stuff that goes in with having a physical item. Yeah, it's cheaper to go that way. Yeah, so if you can do the upgrade from Windows 7, I would go that way. Uh, be warned, it is specifically made for touch surfaces. So... I mean, it, it will work in a desktop environment. Yeah, it's going to be new to you if you're going from 7 to 8, but yeah. it looks a whole lot better, and once you get it down, you're not going to go back. It's really easy to use. I wish they still called it Metro. I like that name. Yeah. But it's Windows 8. Live tiles. Live tiles. But yeah. Yeah, once you use it, you don't want to go back. It's really easy. Yeah, I've been watching a few other podcasts, things like that, and they talk about how it takes about two weeks to acclimate to the new setup because you're getting rid of the start button. You know, it's yeah. the start screen, per se, and you've got all your apps that you use right there. Uh, I would recommend getting the Windows Pro version or Windows... There's a different version that actually uh, makes sure that your old apps still work inside of Windows 8 because the new Windows 8... They want you to go to the Microsoft App Store and buy those apps just like you would for the Mac Store for Mac, you know, and for the way apps are going and things like that. It's no yeah. longer applications, it's programs, it's just apps. And so that's the way things are going. So, yeah, it'll take some time to get acclimated to it. I don't think uh, I'm going to in the near future. It looks good. 40 bucks for an upgrade sounds great, so it may be something, I don't know. Again, this is not my PC. I have left my the apartment, so. He loves it. It's his, it's his um, Macintosh. He keeps it here. Keeps it hidden. It's kind of like a, an apartment for an, uh, something on the side, you know. <laughs> don't, don't listen to it. Anyway, moving on. Just to let you know, Windows 8 is out. It's there. Go and check it out. Microsoft.com slash Windows 8, I'm sure. So, uh, what we got next? 15-year-old um, hacker. Okay. He goes by Cosmo or Cosmo the God. He was part of a group called UG Nazis, I think is what it, what it, what it, what the name of it is. Yeah. And, um, well, he was busted for uh, credit card fraud, bomb threats, um, identity theft. Yeah. Basic things that, you know, most hackers do anyway. Yeah. Did he, um, I don't know if he's used any of these identities to actually purchase things or sell them, you yeah. know, to anybody overseas or anything like that. But, you know, with crimes like that, they're going to come down on you, even if you're 15. But his sentence is that he's going to have to be without computers, without Pretty much internet access, I think, for seven years? Was it yeah, seven? something like that. It says here uh, he was arrested in June as part of a multi-state FBI sting, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, breaking into Amazon, PayPal, stuff like that. And he will be on probation until his 21st birthday. Yeah. It's kind of, it brings us back, like, to the, if you people know, uh, back in the 90s, you know, Kevin Mitnick. Right, He's right. probably the most famous hacker that, you know, got arrested and, you know, wasn't allowed to touch a computer for... Almost, I think 20 years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
pretty much almost his entire life in computer years. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of strict on the sense that he's only 15 years old because mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of time in computer time. Like you said, in computer years. That's, yep. that's what we're talking about. Because in five years, I mean, look at the difference between 2006 and 2008 in smartphones, in smartphones alone. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind, 2007, I iPhone. Mm -hmm. You go 2006, you have all these other crazy phones. I mean, uh, I had the Razer V3i, which was with the, uh, the V3 with iTunes, basically. I had a Palm Trio 750. And then, you know, then we switched to the iPhone. And I had the first iPhone, great, you know, awesome. And then every smartphone after that copied pretty much everything that they did. So, you know, in that short time span, just in smartphones, we're not talking computers, but obviously in smartphones, things can change. In so. that, I, I can see that, but in computers, they're really basically made the same way. I mean, we got hackers in, you know, Libya and everything over there that they don't have the most sophisticated technology, but they could still steal all of our information. Yeah, because all it takes. Which, by the way, if you get an email saying that starts with "Dear Beloved" <laughs> or "Thank God I Found You" or "You Have a FedEx Package for a Million Dollars," all you gotta do is <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, I think we need to do like a separate. That's, video. A little, that's just a little side note. Go. Don't do it. Uh, yeah. it. Even if it sounds great, just just don't do it. But getting back to it, you know, I I don't know. I, I think that he is going to find some way on the side to... Well, he's going to be in jail, you know. I mean, there there's people in jail that have things that go on outside that they're controlling, per se. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if he's going to have that sort of crazy access or things like that. But, you know, until he's 21, you know, six years from now... Uh, We'll see what happens. Or, you know, even how knowledge is, and he just may be a script kitty that got lucky. You know, it, it's... Yeah. You know. So that's something crazy. We'll, we'll see what happens. Again, that's a six-year-long story. He just got busted in June this past yeah. summer, so... But we'll for see. a 15-year-old, that would be a death sentence, pretty much, of, you know, not touching a computer for that long. Yeah, so uh, moving on, I uh, feel sorry for that kid, but this is, this is something that we thought was kind of funny and kind of stupid at the same time. Uh... Remember, folks, smartphones and cameras and digital cameras and things like that, they're so much easier to get online now. And mm -hmm. basically, when you post things to the public, it's not just to your friends and family. It's to the public, which is the Internet. If you post it on the Internet, it's, it's going to get somewhere. Or even YouTube. If you use the right uh, wording in your title, that could be searched, like Keywords, iPad. Yeah. Uh, someone's going to find it, and it's just going to go viral, which I don't, I don't know if these guys in Kentucky we're talking about. Was it Pike Pike Pikeville, Pikeville, Kentucky? Right up the road, actually, from us. Not very far. Oh, really? Yeah, right up the road from us. Well, if you haven't seen the video, they're basically Walmart um, employees. Guess, logistics employees uh, yeah. unloading trucks, and they're like, I don't know if I want to impersonate them to make enemies, but I don't care. Hey, we're going to smash my pads. Just, they chucks it. Just chucks it uh, across the room to another guy, and he's like, I think this iPad had an accident, and he drops it and steps on it. So maybe that was just for them to blow off some steam. The boxes may have been empty. I don't, you know. Yeah, it, it, whether or not they're empty or not, yeah. you're still defacing the product. public eye, just yeah, like yeah. the uh, FedEx guys that got caught on camera kicking, you know, boxes like, um, across the street or just whirlwinding them out the truck into the yards. <laughs> if you record it, it's going to find its way to the internet. If you take a photo of it, it's going to find its way to the internet. AKA uh, you ladies with smartphones and mirror pics and things like that. That's yeah. just a side note. But anyway, so yeah, these guys are, uh, they're fired, correct? Is that, is that right? They're fired now. Yeah, they're, they're now no longer able to work for these, this for Walmart. So poor guys, you know, that's it's your own fault for you know, doing something stupid like that. So be careful what you say, be careful what you do, be careful what you record. Yeah, that's it. Be careful what you record or even tweet. Yeah, because public is public. So speaking of that, just as well, uh, we ran into this one as well. And this was also a public Twitter fight back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, a uh, patron went into a restaurant uh, and said, hey, look, I like this food, but this blah, 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 didn't like it. Yeah, and he posted it, his review, uh, and he was out there, and apparently the chef got a hold of this, mm -hmm. found the tw guy's Twitter name via the, the the review, 
and basically started blasting them and saying, look, if you didn't like it, blah, 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 da, 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 da. And he was like, look, I just didn't like one part of the meal. Mm-hmm. Overall, it was great. I just didn't like this. Well, then it kind of became, well, you're a C-word. And he kind of just went from there and just said, you know, if you shouldn't, you know, blah, 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 you should have talked to me. What makes this a big deal, this is a Michelin star chef. Michelin star chefs, are they're supposed to have a little bit of class to them and not really, you know, they, get, they need to cook and yeah. not worry about what's on Twitter. This one guy is not going to ruin his food. His foods are been graded by the best food graders in yeah. the world. So, um, yeah. I guess he just caught him on a bad day or yeah, something. Yeah, and, and I mean, the, the way this guy comes back, I mean, he says, nice way to gain respect with the chefs. I think you're a, again, C-word. And he continues on, and he says, uh, you need to buy yourself a pair of balls and play with them. Hmm. And I'm like, you know, this is all Twitter back and forth. So this isn't just, it's public. this isn't yeah. emails, you know. Because emails are, you know, somewhat private to a point, not, you know, because they're all owned by Google. At Until point. you reply all. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, it's it's a Twitter fight back and forth. So, you know, uh, James Ursh- uh, Isherwood, and I apologize if I'm, mista- if I'm uh, mispronouncing the name, but uh, James, uh, I feel for you, buddy. Uh, you know, maybe your publicity on this, good or bad, you know, gets you more followers. Maybe more people like what you tweet, you know, for your food, you know. Good. May get you out of more restaurants. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, uh, just remember again, public is public. People pay attention. So when you're out there saying things, I mean, we've had previous episodes that we've made fun of certain people, and people have come back and said so. But we don't really care. So public is public. Just remember that. So you put it out there, it's out there. <laughs> so one of the other big stories that was this past week of uh, Disney. Buying Lucas Films. Yeah. That was a really big one. That was a lot of uh, a lot of Star Wars. Some Star Wars people was really yeah um, because if they actually some some of the uh, boards and things message boards things went back and forth. There's already talks of the creator or the writer for Toy Story three beginning to write Star Wars seven, and people are like wait wait seven what yeah seven eight and nine is the the next trilogy set that's supposed to be out there. Isn't everybody like dead by then? Well, obviously it's not going to be the same characters. It's going to be different. It's going to be like Luke's kid or grandkid at this point. Who cares <laughs> about Luke's third cousin? <laughs> well, maybe. We don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, Disney has bought out... Maybe if Patrick Stewart's in there. I think he... he... Star Trek? Yeah. Really? Yeah, let's just check it up. <laughs> All right, so maybe Star Trek comes in on the next Star Wars Episode 7. We'll see what happens. So yeah. that's enough of that. What was the other big buyout this past week? Priceland buys Kayak. Yeah, now that was that was kind of crazy. Because yeah, because Kayak used to be, hey, come to Kayak. We're, you know, it. Yeah, and they're basically a competitor, I would say, because uh, Priceline and Kayak kind of do the same thing where they're getting prices from multiple places. Uh, it looks like they bought them out for $1.8 million or billion dollars that's a good price though and yeah you can also buy text nation for 1.8 billion <laughs> 40 dollars a share so that's that's completely awesome i mean that's it's they're getting 1.3 billion in stock and 500 million in cash so uh that's that's pretty ridiculous because yeah. their their price closed at 37 dollars a share and they're getting it for forty dollars a share, so that's that's pretty Did good. Did it say if they're keeping like kayaks keeping its own like intellectual property, like you can go to kayak.com steal? I, I it would hope just... so. I would hope so. And the and the good part about this is kayak just went public in July of this year. So it's not like, you know, they've been I mean, they've been around for a while, but not publicly owned as a traded company. So for yeah. them to be just now uh, public in July and to come out now, you know, and they're bought by Priceline, that's it's pretty cool. So side note. William Shatner has his own app now. Uh, I think it's Shatner Eyes or something like that. You can put in your own phrases and he can say them for you. And I think it's like pre-recorded stuff. But check it out. Look it up. I didn't get the full details on that. It was just a side thought that I had just right now. So, uh, But that's pretty much it. Um, gaming news. Gaming news. We haven't touched this in a long bit. But two of the biggest games coming out this year for 2012 and probably will be the number one and number two spot for 2012 uh, Halo 4 is already released. You are already playing it. You're probably already sitting in your pajamas in your mama's basement and you haven't showered for a week. Because I know a few of you that I tweeted to and said that's pretty much what has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halo 4 is out. It's on the Xbox and everybody's playing it. I mean, they had the midnight release as 
uh, as well as by now, Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2, the uh, major release from the Treyarch Studios, I think is who it is. Uh, 343 for Halo 4 uh, Industries, I think, and then Treyarch Studios for Black Ops 2, uh, which is the follow-up to the previous Black Ops. So, two major, huge game releases for this uh, holiday season. Uh, I haven't purchased them yet. I didn't even pre-order them. I really, honestly, you I've been pre ordered I know. Normally, I typically would have. Yeah, you do. Yeah, they love I, Yeah, I know. I've I've been broke for a couple couple six months, so uh, I wasn't able to pre-order anything like that. So I haven't been wearing my thumbs out. I've actually been wearing my Xbox out on video stuff. You know, Hulu, uh, Comcast, you know, all that stuff. So two big game releases, and if you haven't gotten your fingers on them. Uh, I recommend checking out CNET. They've got some good reviews. Uh, any of the other G4, I don't know if they do game reviews with X-Play so much anymore. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen G4 yeah. in a bit, so don't quote me on that. But go check it out. You know, two big, huge game releases for the holiday season. I think it's going to be awesome. I definitely, hopefully before the year's out, I will have both of those games. I'll be wearing my thumbs out playing those games. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a big gamer, but this other game, uh, Medal of Honor. Yeah. No, like I said, I'm not a big gamer, so I don't know a lot about the game, but the story is getting a lot of traffic. Yeah, let's let's talk about that one. Tell us tell us about this one. Well, um, apparently seven Navy SEAL team members, and apparently one of the members was a part of uh, SEAL Team Six that killed Osama bin Laden, have been uh, given their I guess insider inside secrets into to the game developers, so yeah. that the game you really are doing what Navy SEALs do and. Well, the government's not happy about that. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about that, and, and I tweeted about this when I saw this story hit. I was like, well, think about it this way. Whether or not they're getting reprimanded on the inside, you know, by the Navy SEALs, by the inside police, their own, you know, police. Yeah. What if you? What if maybe the game developers pay them more than what the government does? Maybe that's what happened. Maybe I would take more money to be tell you what's going on inside the Navy SEALs, too, if you paid me more money. I mean, I think anybody on the SEAL Team 6 should just... They already should have paid retirement. Because they killed the man who killed a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, yeah, we you, should take care of our uh, military personnel. Like, yeah. That's what, so. that's what it boils down to. Yeah. We're, we're, we want to see where this story goes and see what happens to these guys. Because, uh, I mean, basically they were just consultants to the game developers and saying, you know, this is, yeah, like you said. I'm sure there's no, like, bomb codes or, you know, anything <laughs> like that. Like, hey, if you, if you go turn to the right at this tree... Here's a false bottom in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, Inside there's Obama's cell phone. You know. Yeah. So Medal of Honor, just look for more reality, per se, in the Medal of Honor game that's about to be released or has been released or something like that. They they, they consulted. I don't know Medal of Honor that well, so I just know Black Ops and things like that. It's like arresting Rockstar or telling you how to steal a car <laughs> and kill a hooker. So anyway, that's it for episode number 55. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe to us in all the locations that we have. You can go online to youtube.com slash TV. Hit the subscribe button up there. Comment below. Uh, share us out with your friends. You know, tell us, you know, send it out. Embed it. We don't care. Wherever it is, youtube.com slash TV. Friend us, facebook.com slash TV. Um, you go ahead and share us there as well. Yep. Also, don't forget, we've got Google+, gplus.to slash TV. I'm still waiting for Google+, Plus to actually give us the AOK -okay to have, I think it's plus.google.com slash plus TV. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think that's the short code that they're going to end up with, but we haven't gotten the vanity URL. So for right now, gplus.to slash TV. Add us to your circles, share us out to your tech friends. Uh, we try to stay up on top of the news, so share us in your circles. And if you want to get even more news than that, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash TV. Yeah, all, all the Twitter, Google+, and Facebook is our news stream. Basically, uh, we go out and read the news stories, and the ones that we like, we share out that way. So make sure you follow us on all of those. And always and every single time you want to go and check it out, check out our website, textnation.tv. Right there at the top, you can just scroll through like iTunes and just see all the episodes, the last <laughs> ten episodes that you see there. Scroll down to the bottom, see some... Uh, screenshots of the ones, and you can see... Also, we have up here the text minutes, text interviews, text unboxings. If you're watching this on the Text Nation website, as he was pointing out right there. If you're on YouTube, his pointing didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> but like I said, leave a comment below, uh, like us, subscribe us, friend us, share us, circle us, whatever it is that you do. One last one that you 
you still take care of Pinterest? Is that, is that right? Pinterest.com? Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. yeah. So. People are still stealing my photos. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Pinterest.com slash TextNationTV. We'll see you again for episode number 56, and we're getting soon to the end of 2012. We may have yes. some special stuff coming around for you. And remember, we will be at CES 2013 in the second week of January, right? Yeah, right. so any companies that can't afford bigger companies to sponsor them at CES, send us a letter. Yeah. We don't mind a, Pimping out. a sticker or, you know, a, we are a, we are a family-friendly show, so keep that in mind. But and we're tech-related and yeah. gaming and stuff like that related, so keep that in mind. Yeah, just so no, like, no wheat thins or anything like that. <laughs> we might take wheat thins. I might eat wheat thins. I might take a Snapple. He can eat. <laughs> we'll see you again for episode 56. Thanks for watching.